greetings you know in advertising market right now you when you want to advertise your business there are so many options i thought i knew it all already because i have interviewed over 1200 thought leaders and business owners i asked them how do you grow your business wait until you watch my today's guest he has come up with something which most of the time digital tv and print media we just kind of stick to that and we ignore that area that's in store marketing and that's very very beneficial because that's where your buyer is already walking through those oils in that right inside store and they are 100% in a buying mode that's the time to actually show your advertising instead of just curious clicking on simply not clickers they are the real buyers and they are already emotionally ready to take out their credit card and take your product on so for that purpose i'm going to we are going to spend few minutes together so set aside all your distractions and let's learn dive into in this right now in case you don't know me my name is mohammed sadiq i am the host of growth hacking show where we bring founders ceos serial entrepreneurs who come and share their strategies how they grow their business and what mistakes they have done and how they recovered from that one so without any further delay please join me to welcome managing partner of uh, charter digital media chris curen from new york chris welcome hi right, thank you mohammed good to see you again yeah chris let me start with this where were you what happened who you were surrounded with that inspired you to get into helping people to make a decision on their advertising well i started out um my career started out kind of um uh i've always been in my dad was a, a design engineer but he's also in technical communication so i learned a lot about how to deal with clients and what the client's needs were. I think that's the first thing you have to assess is what what need are you going to provide a solution to? So as I grew in this business and I watched as things change and as you just said, there's a lot of opportunities to buy any kind of advertising format or or network or program, but is it fully um is it measurable and can you absolutely guarantee that you're going to get an ROI on that? I doubt that, but 360 degree marketing efforts require you to look at the user journey as much as what the solution is as well. So I've always been fascinated by um when I was in the graphics business somebody mentioned to me one time that graphics uh, graphic art should should rape the sensibilities which is kind of a violent statement but it's own way but at the same time it it resonated with me in that you to, to get cut through the noise cut through the clutter and be set yourself apart you have to be smart you have to be strategic you have to be tactical and you have to use every tool in the box and that's what i try to offer wonderful wonderful thank you so much so based on your significant experience in the in this market so what are the top 3 mistakes the businesses do to which stops them to grow their business so i think the first mistake is most people don't write a or sit down and really write a good solid business plan before they start. you are muted chris you you touch something uh that's that is the way to do this and that's not the case um you really got to know your market that's the first thing is do your homework do the hard work before you start the company ask for a don't don't make mistakes thinking i can do it all uh, i don't need help you're going to need help you're going to need to set aside funds um that are your funds you're going to have to self fund to create i'm sorry that was uh the uh you know you have to self fund and if you're not prepared to do that you shouldn't be doing that so the first thing is do your hard homework on the business plan second is be prepared to take some financial sacrifices and the third thing that you the third mistake that a lot of them make is they spend way too much money on r&d you know developing a solution and not knowing how to bring it to the marketplace it's like an engineer saying Uh I I go to an engineer and say I want to buy a watch and he shows me how to build one. That's not the experience I'm looking for. So remember what your role is too. You know I mean you need to hire the people to do certain jobs inside the company that are going to make you successful. You can't do it all alone. That one thing that's the biggest mistake people make. The other is I really don't like bringing a lot of family members into a business. Um <laughs> I I don't want Louie at the register counting my money. <laughs> uh i it's it sounds it sounds a little awkward but you want the relationships to, with the people that you work with 
to be based on specific roles and requirements. Don't make the mistake of not putting out a complete job description of what you need. And that includes yourself. You look in the mirror in the morning and say, what do I need to, to, what do I need to do as an individual to accomplish the goals I put in front of me to start a business? If I haven't done that work, I'm never going to succeed. Wonderful. Very well said. Thank you so much for sharing. So, uh, Chris, uh, let me be a very selfish, and I know my, you know, people who are watching, they are selfish. They want to grab the, your success secrets from you. So what are your top three, not the bottom three, top three success secrets to grow your own business? Um, like I said, I always ask for advice. I always go, to, uh, one thing I look at is I try to find case studies. I mean, there's a lot of information out there that you, and a lot of resources out there. Be, be something of a research geek. Go out and research what it is that you want to do and look for best business cases. Uh, Harvard Business Review, MIT Sloan, all those different schools uh, and publications have case studies and you can find, find it by content. You can go Google content on what you're looking at doing and seeing if there's any advice that can be taken from there. And remember, free advice is probably worth exactly what you paid for it. It's free, so it's probably not going to be all that great. What you want to do is sit down, though, and look at where you are and where you want to go to and then understand the steps and timeline that's going to be required to accomplish that. And, and don't, be, don't be putting out overly optimistic views of what your sales are going to be. Be realistic. I had a guy one time say he was going to grow his business from $240,000 in gross revenue in year one to $4 million in year two. And I said, well, you're getting a capital infusion of about $30 million because if you don't get that, you're never going to get to that point either. You know, you have to be extremely re realistic in your goal setting. That's something I've always been very good at. And be willing to adjust those goals. Understand that failure is not uncommon. You're going to make mistakes. Don't punish yourself for the mistake. Learn from the mistake. Don't get your ego involved. This is not about me building a legacy. It's me creating a, a, a substantive business that will sustain itself once I've built it. Okay, so you have to be able to, and, and uh, there's plenty of books out there that'll tell you, if it can't be measured, it's not worth doing. <laughs> I'm like, that's, that's oversimplifying it. Data is very, very important these days to a lot of people, but it should be even more important to you. What data is there out there about the business that I'm trying to provide? And who can I, who can I get into relationships with? Who can I JV with? Who's my best joint venture opportunity? Because sometimes building it alone in a, in a, in a, in a standalone silo, may not work but if you can take your skills and marry them to somebody else's skills and do a joint venture now all of a sudden you're going to have a bit much bigger audience to work with as well i think that's you know those probably be the three most basic points i'd make understand the business that you're getting into understand the timelines that and 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 stay try to stay true to them and don't over promise and under deliver you know don't don't make the don't make the mistake of saying, "Well, I'm going to grow my sales. I'll do it." This this is a multi million dollar business. I said, "You know what? Amazon and Facebook and uh, some Google and all these other guys, yeah, they they were in it. The timing can be part of it as well. I think timing is a big part of it. But remember, not everybody's going to be a Mark Zuckerberg. Not everybody's going to be a Steve Jobs. Okay, mm, understand your place in the pecking order and try to find a Steve Jobs to mentor you or you know somebody like that." Thank you. Thank you so much. Chris, based on your years of experience, uh, you know, the business uh, life is like a roller coaster. Sometimes it's up, sometimes it's down. And, you know, so yeah. based on, so when you feel like a down, how you kind of keep going from that angle from in your business life? Well, I think you go back and look at, did I make a mistake or is this a market, is the market correcting? Is there more competition than we initially anticipated? Uh, is there a down cycle totally in the, in the economy where the services I'm providing aren't a priority to the company I'm trying to provide them to. You know, you have to match up their needs to your solutions, not vice versa. If you don't have the customer's needs in, 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 in mind, and you don't go back to the customer and say, what can I do to help you? Because, and, and be, be honest, if you have the right relationship with a client, you can tell them, look, I'm in a downturn right now. I don't know what's going on. I'm not making the same money I made last year. What are you seeing in your business? And then leave it at that. Open-ended questions will lead you to have somebody give you some advice or some perspective that you probably wouldn't get normally unless you were in a business relationship with them. <laughs> Excuse me. 
talk to your customers and ask honest questions basically you know just be open candidate with them in fact that will help you to build a better close relationship you know, more authentic relationships you know well p- people start to word transparency like it's something new being <laughs> honest and being open is being human and i keep going back to that one point technology can only take you so far i can build every algorithm under the sun to answer all your questions i could have had a robot answer these questions Yeah. But would that have would that have satisfied your audience? No, because I have 40 years of experience doing these things, um, you know, and I've made, probably made plenty of mistakes. But I've also worked in an industry that's allowed me to participate in every other kind of industry out there. When you're in the media business, you provide solutions to every kind of company, whether it be a truck leasing company, a uh, uh, Hallmark Cards, or uh, 20th Century Fox uh, trying to trying to promote a movie. I've worked with all those kinds of people, and I can tell you the mistakes they make. um the where they overspent how they misspent how they were misadvised you know you don't learn those things from one experience you learn them from years and years of multiple experiences and i keep a diary i keep notes i keep as i told you when we started the call i had to find my notes for today's call i want to be prepared yeah wonderful wonderful so chris how are you growing your business uh, right now in this economy We have managed, well, what, what, as I told you earlier, one of the things I believe in is that we no longer need to be in the acquisition or be, look to be, be acquired. What we want to be is a smart partnership. So we look at joint ventures. And for the sake, for the sake of argument, we wanted to take uh, your book, New Success Secrets, and promote it to the marketplace. We might use a, just the social media to promote that to entrepreneurs. But if we were trying to do a TV show with you, That might require us to go out and look for channels that we can live stream it to, add additional services on the on the front end and the back end. I am not a one trick pony. I'm not. I'm, I look at solutions as being a matter of asking a lot of questions, challenging people on their on the status of where they are. You know, I learned a a, a process in Dale. Believe it or not, Dale Carnegie is probably one of the best writers I've ever experienced in my life, and. I always tell people if you do nothing else, read Dale Carnegie, How to Make Friends and Influence People. It'll change your perspective on how you approach things. Um, you can build a better mousetrap. You can build a better hamburger. But is the market ready for it? And have you done all the necessary things to do that? But on our end, I use a very simple process. It's purpose, process, and payoff. What is the purpose of the meeting or the purpose of the solution? What is the process we're going to need to go through to develop it, deliver it? And then finally, what's the payoff? Why would, would I put a year's worth of work into something that's going to pay me $20,000? No. I would put a year in if it's going to pay me $20 million. <laughs> you know, it's a value proposition at that point. So when we grow our business now, we look for, as I said, we need somebody to, to give us content. We find three or four good brand storytellers, whether it be on the TV side, the advertising and writing side, um, you know, the creative side. So we have a staff JV on that side. Um, when we look for networks, we find networks that are that are under delivering or underperforming, and we work with them to create a better business opportunity that way. And last but not least, is we look at what need does this satisfy for the consumer. There's no, you know, sometimes less is more. Sometimes too much is too much. I mean, we get bombarded. I mean, not about you, but I get text messaging now from brands. Um, <clears throat> sometimes those are really intrusive, as you saw a minute ago. Your screen never. Your no, your screen is never. You don't control your screen anymore. <laughs> that screen is. It gave you gave that up the minute you put your, as I told you earlier, if you put your credit card into a, a point of sale system. Guess what? They have a complete profile on you, and I don't care if they blockchain it or not. Somebody's going to figure out a way to figure out who you are, where you are, and what you're doing. <laughs> It's a big brother. <laughs> But <laughs> and as I said, growing our business right now, my focus really is on strategic alliances. Who brings the best solution in that particular niche? And I vet them thoroughly, and I say, "Good. If we can work together, I can grow your business and grow my business at the same time." Wonderful. That's always a great thing. So that leads to my next question: How growth hacking show community can support you? Well, I think you know it's a matter of um, communication. You know, it, the the stupidest question is the one that does doesn't get asked. You know, ask the questions. Don't be embarrassed to ask a question, even if it sounds sounds like it's um it's stupid. It's not. It, uh, something happened with your screen there, Mohammed. Yeah, yeah, no, I'm showing your LinkedIn profile here. Oh, yeah. yeah. Um, the, the, I think the best thing you can do is 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 write posts. You know, respond to posts on LinkedIn. Um, look at your um, look at your immediate uh, connections in LinkedIn and see who 
who you can talk to that's in a comp. Let's say for sake of argument, I'm going to go talk to um, P&G. First thing I'm going to do is go into LinkedIn and see who I know from P&G that's on LinkedIn. Maybe they can help guide me towards a person who's a better decision maker in a certain area. Um, prospecting, 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 continuously prospecting for opportunities. You can't do enough prospecting. As far as I'm concerned, every minute of every day, whether it's an event, you know, something new in a community, something new on a, on a Facebook or a LinkedIn, or even just in the news in general, what's not only what's my reaction to it, but what's the balanced reaction to it? There's going to be people on one side and one people and some people on the other side. How do I, how do I straddle the fence and provide a solution on either side? Um, that is not going to be motivated by anything other than uh, making more money. You know, my attitude is I'm in the business of doing it. <laughs> you know, you don't, Sitting around and thinking about it's for academics. I'm not an academic. Yeah. I could probably teach a class on it, but I really don't. I really don't want to deal with it right now. Just want to, I, like I said, I focus on bottom line results. You know, you. Always, always be prospecting. Always be prospecting. Thank you, Chris. As we are about to wrap up, what would you say as a final word? Smile. Enjoy your life. Understand that you're in business to make money, not to make friends. You will make friends as a result if you do good business and you do well by doing good. You know, that, that to me is uh, that, that's an uncompromising position uh, for me. I will not do business with, with people who I think are malevolent or mean or, uh, or, or uh, can't be trusted. You have to know the person you're dealing with. It's to me, it's a shake hand agreement. If I you are muted, Chris. Uh, if I can't the table from you shake your hand and say we have a deal all the lawyers in the world are not going to help me okay so live up to what you say you're going to do 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 when you make that commitment fit, finalize it finish it yeah. thank you so much chris very well said thank you so much uh, for sharing your wisdom with us today on the behalf of growth hacking show community and our entire team we really appreciate you this is Mohammed Sadiq signing up from atlanta georgia Wishing you good luck, good sales, and I do have a path cross again with another amazing guest. Until then, all best wishes. Thank you, sis, Mohammed.